class Prabhupada gave in 1968 in Los Angeles. There was a devotee reading the Bhagavad Gita and tried to recognize his voice, but you would probably know who that person is who was reading. Uh, let's see if I can find... What, what month was it, by the way? That Los Angeles. Be established. What month? Bhagavad Gita was explained to him. How he accepted it should be noted. This is men mentioned in the 10th chapter. After hearing the Bhagavad Gita from the Lord, Arjuna accepted Krishna as the Supreme Brahma. Every living being is Brahma or a spirit, but the Supreme Living Being is the Supreme Brahma. Now, here is another point that everyone is reading Bhagavad Gita. The it is clearly stated how Bhagavad Gita should be accepted. Bhagavad Gita was spoken to Arjun, and Arjun accepted it in his own understanding, whatever he understood. That is also stated. Therefore, we have to place ourselves in the position of Arjun and accept the truth as Arjun directly received it. That is understanding of Bhagavad Gita. That is stated in the tenth chapter how Arjuna accepted Bhagavad Gita and Krishna. That is explained. Yes. Arjuna accepted Krishna as pure, free from all material contamination, as the 
supreme enjoyer, as the foremost person, the supreme personality of Godhead, never born, the greatest. Now one may say that one may say that since Krishna and Arjuna were friends, Arjuna was only saying these things to his friend. But Arjuna mentioned that Krishna is accepted as the supreme personality of Godhead. Not only by himself, but by Narada, Vyasa, and numerous other great persons. Apologies. He accepted Krishna as the supreme personality of Godhead, not because Krishna happened to be his intimate friend, but on the authorities of Ayana, and on the statement of Krishna. And your friends in your country, they have seen enough of this material happiness, Oh. So that is stated here. Yeah. Krishna is accepted as the Supreme Person of Godhead by all the followers of Veda. That is a fact. The following is a class on the Bhagavad Gita as it is, second chapter, text number 8 through 12, given by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. Recorded on November 27, 1968, in Los Angeles. The following is a class. That's so, I mean, the temple president was Dayananda, but that's, right. that's, 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 that's not his voice. I know. And even but, young Dayananda, Ani Rudu. It's a really young sounding voice, yeah. but he's he's educated. Yes, you he can he tell by how he reads. He reads very, very, very well. Do you have an English accent? No, yeah. American. Okay, I just thought I'd ask. Because this is Dayananda's time when they first started the temple yeah. in 68, right? Yeah. Not in 67, they started in 68. And this is November in 68. Have they gotten to La Cienega place yet? I think the La Cienega place wasn't gotten until the very beginning of 69. 69, okay. So they're, they're maybe in the garages. Yeah. Remember that yeah. whole past time? Yeah. In Dayan people's garages. Dayananda uh, wanted me to drive him around. So this is just a couple of years ago. So I was just the two of us. We were driving yeah. to all these different places. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ah, but you been that close? I don't know. Green pillow. Yeah. It might have been somebody traveling there to Los Angeles because I mean the devotees. Aniruddha was the other person, but yeah. that was not Aniruddha's voice. So. Yeah. It could have been any San Francisco, they you know, they were yeah. coming down. Yeah. In fact they, they came down to the Sangatan parties. Right. So at that time. Yeah, yeah just for because they hadn't done the book distribution yet by sixty eight. That didn't sound like Madhuvisa either. No. <laughs> and this sounds quite young. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Anyway, maybe someday we'll find out. <laughs> But he sounds like, you know, young and convinced. And Prabhupada has him reading, you know. <clears throat> okay, no, that's okay. a way of saying things in such a concise way. Yeah. yeah. It's amazing. like an axiom. Totally amazing all the time. I wonder how much our younger generation, you know, our Gurudev Sangha, has listened to Srila Prabhupada's lectures. Do you have any idea about that? I, I mean, in my past, we used to listen to Srila all the time. Uh -huh. But I don't know about in general. Uh -huh. Okay. So you're, you've heard, had, was that a long time ago since you were hearing Prabhupada? Yeah. I mean, I think when we were kids, but then I think once Gurudev came, we were listening more to Gurudev right. in general. I see. A, a little bit, though? Yeah. Here and there? Gotcha. Okay. I just find that no one can compare. I mean, Prabhupada's, you know, like I've been talking about this, Prabhupada's way of presentation. It's completely unique. Completely unique. So I think any devotee of the Krishna consciousness movement would be really losing out without connecting with Shiva Prabhupada in the relationship of hearing from him. 
not just reading his books, hearing his voice. Very important. And also watching some videos. But there's so many thousands of hours of Prabhupada's recorded audio. Was there like audio. a set, a video set that was like 18 videos or something like that? We yes. used to watch that all the time at my house. Oh. We used to watch those videos of Prabhupada. I see. Constantly. Oh, nice. Uh, and he's using very logical, you know, uh, conclusive mm -hmm. sort of language to bring an understanding. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the only problem people that understand the Shuddha Buddha is in transposing his inner meaning. Sometimes they would lose something they would actually capture. You mean when they're transcribing his when lectures? Transcribing his lectures, they would be changed. Like, like you just said, the paths, the moods, are something that, um, unless a devotee is very familiar with Srila Gurudev's style of speaking, presenting, especially in English, and at first, he used to say it all the time, I'm very crippled in English. And then when he would be able to speak in Hindi, he would just like fly. Sometimes in the West, there would be a Indian audience, oh, please, Gurudev, please speak in Hindi, like in Texas and places, you know. Yeah, so in transcribing, uh, Shamani said, so Gurudev will say a few words, but you know exactly all the things he wants to say. Yeah. If he's speaking about, let's say, the, the levels of developing shadha, He'll just say the first one or two things, but what he's, and he goes, anap, anap, you know, like that. So when you transcribe, then you have to write. Srila Bhakti Vidyan Bharati Maharaj was even more difficult in his elderly period. And I talked with Madhava Priya, who was the main translator for his vocal lectures, you know. But I mean, because I talked with him because they, they, they were putting some translators simultaneously who just, they just didn't. It was so dissatisfying. They couldn't keep up, they couldn't express properly like that. So I told him one time, about, about two years before he departed from the planet, I told uh, Madhava Priya, I said, Prabhu, we were in Jagannath Puri, and I said, you know, Srila Maharaj is now coming onto the world stage. Okay, and what we're getting is so inferior of a translation because Madhava Priya, he would, sometimes Madhava Priya would do some translating, but never simultaneous translating. He would never do simultaneous translating. And then, because others were doing it. But then I suggested to him, I said, well, you know, you have to do a translation after he speaks, so maybe what you can do is take notes and then speak. And that's what he started to do, actually, after that. He, he, he couldn't fully what he was saying. But those who were with him, like Madhava Priya, they understood what he's trying to say. They'd spent so much time with him. So, they, so then when he would translate into English, it would be much, much longer than the speaking that Bharati Maharaj did in Hindi. You know? Yeah, so, but Srila Prabhupada, he, he was the... He goes, very good, very good. So I was thinking, how long can you do that? Yeah. But you are very good. I want you to keep doing this. Yeah. I couldn't keep up with that. But it was like, yeah. Yeah. How okay. But they hung Shri Guru Shri Jataha Patakamalam. Shri Guru Navaishnavam Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raghunatan Vitam Tam Sajivam. Sadvaitam Sabadhutam Rijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Sri Radha Krishna Padam Sahagana Lalita 
Shiva Shakan Vitam Nishtra Om Agyana Timirandasya Gyanam Jana Shalakaya Chakshuru Militam Gena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Mukam Kuroti Vachalam Pangam Langayate Girim Yatkripa Tamaham Vande Shri Guru Nidhyataranam Vansha Kalpataru Vihascha Kripa Sindhu Vyaevacha Patitanam Pavanibhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo 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 Mahabhadanyaya Krishna Prema Pidayate Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Namne Gauda Chishena <coughs> Nityanandam Namastubhyam Premananda Pradayane Kalo Kalmashanashaya Janava Padayana Maha Panchatatvatmakam Krishnam Bhakta Rupa Swarupakam Bhakta Vataram Bhaktakyam Namami Bhakta Shaktikam E Krishna Karna Sindho Dina Bandho Jagatpati Gopisha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostade Tapta Kanchana Gorangi Radhe Vrindavaneshvari Vrishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vrindai Tulsi Dibai Priyai Keshavasya Cha Krishna Bhakti Prade Devi Satyavachai Namo Namaha Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shivas Adi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare <coughs> For my Dandavat Pranams, my Shraddha Pushpanjali at the lotus feet of my most worshipable beloved Diksha and Siksha Guru Devs, Nitya Pravishta, Om Vishnupad Paramahans Astatara Shata, Sri Srila A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Maharaj Srila Prabhupada. Nitilila Pravishto Vishnu Bad Paramahans Asto Tarasata Sri Srila Bhakti Rakshak Sri Tarago Swami Maharaj. And Nitilila Pravishto Om Vishnu Bad Paramahansa Asto Tarasata Sri Srila Bhakti Vedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj. And I offer my Dandavat pranams to all of my Sri Sri Rupa Nuga Guru Varga. And I offer my Dandavat pranams to all the Vaishnavas and all the Vaishnavis. So now we come to the second quality, the second characteristic of pure devotional service. Hmm? So the first one is Kleshadni and the second one is Shubhada. Shubhada, giving all auspiciousness. So this next section is titled Krishna Consciousness is All Auspicious. <coughs> time in our lives when we never understood what is auspicious what does that mean auspiciousness <laughs> auspicious right yeah. it's not a it's not a, a word that is used very often in normal vocabulary auspicious kk probably learned it when she was three <laughs> <laughs> i think i just never didn't know that it wasn't a common word <laughs> <laughs> right of course <laughs> So, here we're going to understand what is auspicious. Srila Rupa Goswami has given a definition of auspiciousness. He says, 
that actual auspiciousness means welfare activities for all the people of the world. That's auspiciousness. If we're just trying for our own personal auspiciousness, that's not real auspiciousness. Now, Prabhupada's going to go into this. At the present moment, groups of people are engaged in welfare activities in terms of society, community, or nation. There is even an attempt in the form of the United Nations for World Help Activity. We have a different view now, but at any rate, they like to present like that. <coughs> but, <clears throat> due to the shortcomings of limited national activities, such as, so, so, Shri Shri Guru Gauranga Gandharvika Giridhari Radha Govinda Ji Uki Jai So, but due to the shortcomings of limited national activities, such a general mass welfare program for the whole world is not practically possible. Why is it not practically possible? Because of national interests. Yes. Shortcomings of limited national activities. Welfare activities. What a powerful paragraph. Hmm. Hmm. Who's, who's writing this? The person who's doing that. And even it's just in the beginning stages, but he's announcing. No, this is for the whole world. Very interesting to read those books of the devotees like Shama Sundar and Mukunda and others who wrote their memories and their experiences at that airport. H-A-R-E. And it's even spelled that way. <laughs> <laughs> so there was such a buildup of books being distributed there over a period of a couple of years. You know, when the airports first opened up and, and devotees were going there in mass, actually, book distributors, sometimes they had like a dozen devotees going to O'Hare Airport and every single terminal. corridor or whatever, terminal, you know, they were, they knew all the times of the flights arriving from this place, that place. In a very systematic way, they were trying to get the books out. And Srila Prabhupada, that's a whole beautiful history of all the letters that he wrote and all the statements that he made about the importance of distributing his books and how much it pleases him and the whole thing, the whole rasa, right? So, one time Srila Prabhupada told to the devotees when they were reporting how many books they were distributing at the O'Hare airport, then Prabhupada said in a quite serious manner, not like in a light way or in a joking way. He says, you should approach the authorities uh, of the airport or the city authorities. And so now, what does it mean? Chasing rhinos with the Swami. It means, Prabhupada told one time, he said, when someone is hunting for rhinoceros, so it is very, very difficult, nearly impossible <laughs> to, to sh bring down a rhinoceros. They're like tanks, They're, and it's very, very dangerous, very difficult. So people that do that kind of game hunting, right? Like if they try to do that, then, you know, people, really? You're hunting rhinoceros? Yeah, I mean, the rhinoceros can go towards your jeep and turn it over and just like devastating what it can do. So Prabhupada said, 
In our movement, we should always follow this policy that we will always shoot for the rhinoceros. Why? Because if we fail, we try to shoot for the rhinoceros, but we fail, then everybody will simply say, oh, you tried at least, such a difficult thing you tried. But if we succeed in getting the rhino, then they will go, oh, you've done the impossible. So that statement of Srila Prabhupada was kind of like a theme. And Shyam Sundar, who was with Srila Prabhupada in those early period, very early period, 67, they started the temple in San Francisco, then they started the temple in London, and they met the Beatles. That was a, and as he's writing his book and coming into the second volume, there's probably even a third volume, I think. Right. Yeah. And uh, you know, that's India. <laughs> So, at different points, as he's writing the book, he says, so, another rhino in the, in the bag or something like that, he says, another rhino in the bag. This is how it was in the beginning. Fearless. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, anyway, then Mandakini came, and I think she could only stay for a month or something, or three weeks. She came many times. Yeah, back and forth. Only for three days, seven days. Oh, really? That only, Same oh my God. Visa. So difficult. Yes. Yeah, they got legally married because otherwise she wouldn't be able to. But why? She was only given a few days. Some obstacles. You know, and it was. And Prabhupada challenged the entire Western civilization, which his Guru Maharaj did. And Prabhupada went face to face with the various intellectual leaders and scientists, face to face, challenging them. Religious leaders, just like in France. It was named Cardinal Deneleu. And a person who is engaged in devotional service in full Krishna 